Now one of the most common feeders that a lot of people use these days is the humble cage feeder. There have been lots of people getting back into the sport, um, just obviously after coming out of lockdown and that sort of thing, lots and lots of people have been getting in touch. Just saying they've been out of fishing for several years, there are also lots of newcomers to the sport as well. And I can quite understand how selecting the right feeder for the right job can sometimes be a little bit confusing, unless you know what the design of that feeder is all about. Now for me, one of the most enjoyable ways of feeder fishing is with a cage feeder. And that's generally because um, a lot of the time we're targeting silverfish and it can be quite an active way of fishing and it's sometimes one where you can actually make things happen depending on the situation and where you're fishing and how you're fishing it. It's not like a method feeder where method feeder is just a case of almost setting a trap and waiting for the fish to hook itself. The cage feeder is a little bit different from that and that's why we use that in certain scenarios when we wouldn't use the method feeder. So I've been getting loads of messages about different sorts of cage feeders. Obviously Matrix produce a range of feeders and they're all designed for a different reason. Okay, so in this video I'm gonna be talking to you about the four main types of cage feeders that I use in my fishing. And more importantly, I'm gonna be telling you why I select those feeders and why they've been designed in the way that they've actually been designed. Okay, now the first one is, it's just a side weighted version. I'm sure it's a feeder a lot of you have seen. This sort of a side weighted um, cage feeder, it's got, as the name suggests, the weight is on the side of the feeder and then you've got a really nice open cage. Um, that is where obviously you put your ground bait or if you're using sticky mag or something like that, but it's usually ground bait um, in this country, in, in the UK. And that's a great style feeder and I'll be absolutely honest with you, this is the style of feeder that I would use on most occasions if I was able to. Now that having said that, that's purely because I just think that this type of feeder presents the uh, the bait and everything just right when it's actually out there in your swim okay so the key factors to this design is basically as you can see it's got a nice loop on the top these i've never had one of those fail on me yet with these crimps and they're not too big so that's going to help reduce tangles we've got a nice fine wire mesh when you're looking at cage feeders you'll notice that there are different gauges of wire mesh and basically they are like that because they are gonna allow you to feed different baits in different ways. So a nice fine wire mesh like this one, that will allow the water to get to the ground bait really, really easily, and that will help break down that ground bait so it empties from your feeder much, much quicker, okay? So that's a key detail you need to think about when you're selecting um, a feeder for the actual swim that you're faced with. And the other key detail to this feeder is that the weight is on the side. Now this particular style I love this style because it's a nice wide base. You know, it's a nice, there's a, there's a lot of surface area there to that weight. There are certain feeders out there on the market where this is quite narrow. And when you're faced with lakes, um, certainly on a lot of commercials, the bottom can be very, very silty, very soft. And the narrower that that base actually is, the more inclined it is gonna to be to sink into the bottom. So that's obviously gonna affect your presentation. It's gonna mean the feeder's digging in the bottom. Um, and it obviously means that your feed is actually going into that silt as well. You know, if, if your ground bait is still intact in the feeder, when it hits the bottom, then that is obviously getting dragged down into the silt as well. And that can lead to all sorts of problems. Obviously there's the visibility side of it. The fish can't really see the bait how they should be able to. But it also means that if the fish are after that bait, it means that they've got to dig into that silt to get to the bait. And that's going to cause you all sorts of problems. It can cause line bites. and it's just something you want to avoid if you possibly can. And another key detail to this feeder, which I haven't really heard many people talk about, is the, the, the fact that it's black. I just think that's far less discreet than a bright silver feeder. But that's just a personal confidence thing for me. I just like a feeder that's like that, that's not too, um, you know, it's not too bright, it's not going to scare any fish. And certainly when it's, you've got to think about when you're reeling it back in as well, you might be reeling that across another line or within proximity of a shorter line that you've got. Uh, and, and a dark colour like black is just, I think it's less discreet. So that's the kind of detail that I think I'm not saying it will catch you extra fish, but I certainly think it can only enhance the chance of you catching more fish, if that makes sense. Now the second type of cage we've got is this. Now this is, as you can see, it's, uh, it's the same grade of mesh, so it's still a fine mesh, as you can see. I'll just compare those side by side for you. The diameter looks just about the same. 
okay but what we've got here the key detail here is it's got the weight at the bottom so it's a weight you know it's a bottom weighted feeder basically and that's there for one particular reason and that is to help propel the feeder out into your peg all right so if you're faced with conditions that you know it might be windy or you're going out a little bit further then you'll find that this feeder casts much better than the side weighted one okay it will sit on the bottom slightly different but that's something that we can talk about at a later stage but the key to most of our feeder fishing and it's something that i learned you know a few years ago is that i learned it from dean barlow 10 years ago and he said to me you know he made it very clear that quite often there are situations in fishing where the key detail you need to do is make sure you've got a feeder on to get you to where the fish is or to where the fish are because there's no point in presenting a perfectly presented bait if it's in a place where there aren't any fish okay so if you need to go that a little bit further that's when we bring this feeder in brilliant feeder for that sort of thing you know and it's great when you just need to push that little bit further out into into the reservoir okay now the next style of um, cage feeder are the horizons now there are two versions of these now I'm sure most of you will be familiar with this particular version this is the version that's been out the longest um, it's been out for a few years now and as you can see again we've got the same gauge wire cage on there okay so it's exactly the same gauge um, but the key detail that you can see to this again it is black and it's got a nice crimped loop on there as well but as you see this feeder is all about that weight that is at the bottom and that's there for one reason and that is to propel that feeder even further it's to, designed to cut through the air whether there's wind or not but it will just cut out cut you know through the air and help you to achieve those further distances so when you're casting even further this is the style of feeder that you need to do that um, and if there's a bad crosswind or a headwind or anything like that these will cut into that wind brilliantly having been said that these will sit slightly different on the bottom okay so when you're fishing with these try and keep a tight line as the feeder falls the reason why i say that is because as you can see by its very very nature it's, it's a weight forward feeder so if you were to let that hit your clip for example and let it fall vertically which it will do if there's no tension on the line or the braid then it will be more inclined to sink like that straight down and if it is a soft bottom then you might find that that's going to go into the soft bottom a little bit but that's the sacrifice that you make because you know you, you're sacrificing a little bit of presentation for the ability to get out there in the first place so this is the kind of feeder that is all about getting out to where the fish are and the next generation feeder from that if I put them side by side is this latest version here this is the horizon feeder but as you can see it's very very different in its design the shape and principle is the same it's designed for cutting through the wind or through the air so you can achieve those longer distances okay um, but it's actually got a plastic cage now that is ideal for certain scenarios one of the scenarios is if you are feeding more particles so if you're feeding more chopped worm, uh, any sort of feed, then this will be more inclined to hold more bait than the wire version will. As you can see, if you're packing feed into both of those feeders, the wire one, you can see that that's gonna be more inclined to come out through the holes, which means it empties quicker. However, this is more like, more like a, a basket, if you wanna call it that. There's much more surface area as regards the plastic cage, so that will help hold the bait in longer. So that, means that this is the style of feeder that I use when it's very shallow and I want to empty the feeder quickly so if I want to quickly feed the swim that is the feeder that I would use and that's because it's going to empty really really quickly however if I'm waiting a bit longer for bites or if the water is deeper don't forget sometimes when you're casting at range it might be deep water this style of feeder is just going to be more inclined to hold the bait in for a little bit longer because you can really pack it in there because of this wider surface area or the wider gauge of the actual mesh itself a brilliant feeder and the only thing other detail that I need to mention to you is that as you can see when they are both side by side you might find I've found recently that when you're faced with a, a crosswind certainly on some of these large open reservoirs then the wire version will cut through a side wind better than the plastic version okay and that's if I put them side by side you can see why there's a much lower profile on the wire mesh one so this is why we carry different types of feeders it's all right saying you call it a cage feeder but there's four different feeders there that do completely different jobs and they also present the bait slightly differently so when or how would we change um, from one feeder to the next well let me see if I can talk you through this so if we 
let's get a, a cross um, a cross section of the lake. So let's just say, let's just say it's this sort of a lake, typical shape. There we go. Okay, there's the water. This is a cross section. Okay, now a, a normal side weighted feeder like that is ideal for when you're casting a certain range. So say for example you're casting to to here. All right, so you're sat. You're here on the bank, that's you with your fishing rod, okay? So you're gonna cast out to here, and if you're gonna hit your clip, the feeder will come back to you in an arc like that, okay? And when you do that repeatedly, inevitably with, a, with a, an open cage like these, some bait is gonna come out of the feeder, okay? It's inevitable, unless you are absolutely packing the feed in. So what's gonna happen is, ideally, you're gonna have a pile of bait just there. That's where you want the fish to be. So that's where you want the fish to be. But over the course of, um, of fishing, um, assuming you're using a ground bait mix where there is something coming out of it, then the feed is landing there, but it's coming right back towards you. Well, there will be particles of bait coming off and landing here, okay? Now that can become a bit of a hot spot, all right? Now this is obviously more apparent on deeper, deeper venues because the feed is falling longer, but this can be a, a brilliant spot to catch fish later on in the session, all right? Now, a lot of people, when they're fishing in deeper water, they're hitting the, the, the clip, and some of them try to hit the clip here or, or over the shoulder, and then as the feed is falling, they actually follow the feeder forward to allow it to fall more vertically, and that's great. I think that's a great technique, and it's something I've done in the past. However, the more and more I fish, the more I completely understand that um, there are five hours in a match and you need to catch for a longer period within that five hours as you possibly can and by doing this approach by hitting the clip having it come back in an arc you're actually leaving a bit of a hot spot behind your feeder so you can fish here catch as many fish as you possibly can here and if you keep catching then that's happy days you know you just carry on doing what you're doing but let's face it how often does that happen it, it doesn't happen very often so what you can do then is you can either take a couple of meters off your feeder so undo the clip and put a couple of meters on clip back up again so the next time your feeder goes out you're going to cast it out and it's going to land there which is two meters further okay but then what's going to happen then it's going to come back in an arc and it's going to land right in the hot spot now that's something that i like to do just about in all my fishing the only time i don't do this is when it's really really shallow and that's because obviously the feeder hasn't got far to fall and it's not quite the same in deeper water this can be a great way of picking some some fish off later on in the session i don't like to do it during the session i have done it probably halfway through and then maybe nicked a couple of fish and then it's gone quiet and then kind of snuck back to the main feed area just here um to to rest that again i have done that but quite often that once you go past your feed i don't like to come back onto the main feed and that's why i leave it later on in the session okay so you can actually put just put two meters on like we have done here so that your feeder lands that little bit further out and falls back onto the hot spot but the other way you can do it is by switching to a an horizon style feeder like that because what we often find is that even you know even the, the very best anglers uh, you know those that are hitting the clip and that sort of thing it's not always bang tight you know if you're using um, um, a mono or a braid it's not always bang tight so what you can actually do is by switching to an horizon feeder like that and sometimes if it's heavier as well what that will do is just by hitting your clip at the normal range which is this range just by doing that automatically because it's just kind of straightening your line out even more or your braid even more naturally it's going to land just that little bit further past your main feed and towards that hot area um, and that in itself can pick off some extra fish so that is one way that you can actually um, fish you, you kind of fish in two swims but you well you're feeding two swims but you're only fishing one now to me that is the ultimate because you're fishing you're fishing this 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 line here that's the ultimate because you're catching fish and no matter how well you're doing by you know occasionally squeezing the ground bait a little bit lighter every now and then encouraging some feed to come out of that feeder and feed this area here well you're here fishing and then that area is completely undisturbed you know because any fish what you're hooking you're hooking them here retrieving them back this way so it's constantly leaving this area free okay so that is a great way of saving something for later on in the match now if we look at this in a slightly different way okay 
let's do it this way so say you're fishing say you're fishing up against an island and this is something i learned when i was pole fishing i was pole fishing at uh, at the glebe okay now we want a slightly different shape bank to this because some of these commercials that we're fishing and this can work on canals as well is that you've got a bank that goes up and then you might have a shelf okay lots of places have got shelves like that okay so you're going to be sat here let's just change that so it's much more realistic and better to understand you've got that okay then that's that's you sat there okay you've got a fishing rod there all right so we've got a shelf and this happens on a lot of venues a lot of commercials but it can happen if you cast them to an island but certainly on some of the deeper canals as well and what can happen is if i'm faced with a peg like this i like to have two rods clipped up so if i'm casting a feeder um, quite often the bottom of the far shelf is a great place to target better fish you know skimmers bream that sort of thing so you might have a spot just there okay so that's let's show this in red so that's your one line okay so that's line one so i'll have a rod clipped up for that that's ideal you might have a shorter line as well but the bottom of the far shelf is a great place to start so that could often be the, the main line and the other line could be up here in this, sh this shallower water okay now obviously it depends on the time of year it depends on the typography of the peg it depends if there are any features here it depends what species you're after but quite often this can be a great area because it's much shallower certainly in summer if the fish are in the shallower water but what you can actually do is by having two rods clipped up onto these points here you're going to be casting the feeder out to there which will be hitting hitting the surface there and coming back on a clip there and then you've got your other line which is going to there oops to there and then coming back onto that line okay so you've got two spots there now the great thing with this i'll tell you as i see it you could start on, on your line one here and you could feed up up the shelf okay and that means that no matter how many fish you're catching here assuming this distance isn't too short you can catch 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 there happy days but if it does go quiet or when it goes quiet you can always sneak in on this top shelf where it's completely undisturbed and catch fish in the shallower water now i love to do this because we know that fish are in different depths quite often they're down in the deepest water but we're pretty sure they don't live down there anyway they're probably living in this sort of region mid mid sort of water and quite often we only catch them down on the deck in deeper water because they've followed the feeder down or they've seen feed down there and they've gone down to feed however by covering your options by having this second line here you're actually covering this the upper layers of the water like that you see so just like we do when we're pole fishing you might have a deck rig and then you might have a shallow rig you're covering different depths of of the same water and the other thing with this line is that what we found is and i learned this when i was pole fishing i learned it from margin fishing prime example i was fishing at, at, at the glebe and i was fishing in the margin and i was fishing up the shelf just like this and what had happened is every couple of fish it just die on me to just go completely quiet the venue was fishing really really well and I was confident or pretty sure that um, the fish still wanted to feed however I couldn't catch them there and what I gradually found is over a couple of hours and just messing around is that what was happening was when fish came in to this area here when fish came into this area they were obviously when you I mean there were carp in that particular scenario but because this was quite, quite a steep shelf what was happening was I would pop some bait in, the fish would come in, they would mop up all that bait or come over the bait. Obviously some of it would be getting wafted around like it does in shallow water with bigger fish. And what was happening was some of the bait was inevitably going down the slope, down the shelf. And what was happening was I'd catch one or two fish in the shallow water and then I couldn't catch it all. And then I found that by having a rig set up for the bottom of the shelf, which was only about you know a meter meter and a half away from from this line i could nick a couple of extra fish and that's because they'd obviously gone down for that bait that had gone down there and the beauty of that was i then had two swims what i could target because what i could do then i'd catch two fish in the shallow water the fish would inevitably move probably following that bait down so what that what i would do then is quickly go down try and nick a fish or two fish from the bottom of this slope and then i could pop on the top of the shelf there as well if i caught any fish here i could catch them reel them back that way obviously back towards me leaving all this area undisturbed and then when that went quiet i could simply go back up the shelf and catch a couple more fish and before you knew it i had two swims going there and really they were really really well connected they were helping each other out because one was allowing me to catch fish from feed that i'd fed up there but i was catching fish 
totally undisturbed it was undisturbing this wasn't disturbing that at all and obviously i could catch a couple of fish there before the bait went down so i had two lines there that was really working and that's something that i've really crossed over now into my feeder fishing when i'm fishing certainly up to islands and things like that you can have one it clipped up right in the shallow water and then you could have one just down the shelf it's just a really a, a really good way of, of keeping a, a swim ticking over um of just trying to put fish in your net you know don't put all your eggs in one basket as they say you know if you've got options like this places to go you're always thinking about your next move and that is what can keep fish going in in your net over the course of five hours now the other thing about these feeders is which i'll quickly show you is we talk about offsetting lines now you know a lot of people don't always understand about offsetting lines but say for example this is your peg now this is a plan view so we're looking down now so this is you on your peg okay and my rod to the right and this is all the water that's the lake okay so this is the bank all right now certain feeders retrieve differently now this again is another factor we talk about being able to get the feeder out there we talk about how um, the cage feeder can um, keep baiting the feeder how it empties once it's out there the other thing that a lot of people really don't think about is the way that it retrieves now why would that be an issue well the key issue to uh, or the key reason why you'd want a feeder to retrieve well is because if you were fishing over any sort of a ledge or, a, or there were any snags or anything like that then in those scenarios you want a feeder that's going to get up really really nice and quickly get up to the surface so you can reel it in without it getting snagged up so if you're fishing over ledges or anything like that then you want to think about the style of feeder that, that you're going to use and you want one that's going to rise quickly okay feeders like that don't rise quickly okay they're, they're just not designed for that you know you find that they come back to you if I can do it as you're looking at it they actually come back through if you're retrieving it you come back through the water in that sort of angle okay because there's nothing there that's just that that's just fine mesh and what basically happens is as the feed is coming back towards you it the water can just pass straight through it okay it passes straight through it because it's a very fine mesh however a feeder like that well when the water is hitting it there's much more surface area there. there's more plastic for it to hit so that's going to tend to push it up higher so you'll find that that style retrieves and comes up quicker than that style all right now why would that be important like i say the snag scenario or if you're fishing over a ledge that would be one scenario but the other scenario is if you're fishing more than one line now this is our plan of view okay now i always like my longest line straight in front of me or slightly to the left it's just comfortable for me because i'm right-handed it's just what I prefer. Okay, so say for example, I've got a line at 50 meters. Okay, so that's the line there. That's my 50 meter line. Now, it's not very often that we put all our eggs in one basket. We like to cover different areas of the swim, don't we? So say for example, you've got another line in. Say you've got a line at 30 meters. Okay, so if I was to put that 30 meter line just there, for example, 30 meters, well, what's going to happen quite often we're starting on our long line and at some stage you're always going to be fishing your long line anyway so what's going to happen is when i whether i've got a fish on or not and i'm reeling in i'm going to be retrieving that right over that 30 meter line now on shallow venues that can really be detrimental to to this 30 meter line because you know quite often you'll feed it at the start you want some fish to settle on it you want some grazing fish to be on there ready for when you go on it well the last thing you want to be doing is retrieving a feeder like that through it at 100 miles an hour every time you're reeling from your 50 meter line now i'm not saying it's going to ruin your peg but what i am saying is it's certainly not going to help it so wherever possible offset your lines so this can be another reason why having a faster rising feeder is going to help you so that 30 meter line all you simply do is i'm right handed like i said so i like to have it to the right if i was to put that 30 meter line there then i can retrieve my feeder without it disturbing this 30 meter line so that's what they refer to as offsetting lines and you know that is why you'd want a feeder to come up quick as well if it's shallow you don't want a feeder that's going to be flying through the water as you retrieve if you're using a 5000 reel and you're reeling in that comes back at quite a speed you don't want it coming through any of your shorter lines because there might be occasions when you might have a 15 meter line as well so you want to offset that even further now some venues you can't do that if it's tight pegging for example if these are anglers here then you're not you're not gonna have much room to do that so obviously that depends on the peg that you're faced with but wherever you can offset your lines and if you offset them to your right if you're right-handed sorry if you always have your rod to the left like me then you can 
offset those lines to the right and it means that you've still got a really nice angle on your tip okay because I can keep my um, my rod rest um, right in that position there and no matter what line I drop on I've still got a nice angle in the tip to read the bites if it was the other way around for example so say if you are right-handed and you have your rod positioned to the left like I do well say if you put your 30 meter line there and your 15 meter line there yes we're offsetting them which is great but look what happens that is a rubbish angle on your tip and that's even worse so you either fish with your rod in the position that it's in with a rubbish angle where you can't read the bites properly or you're gonna have to mess around moving your rod rest um, over to the left even further to get a nice position and let's face it you know winning matches is difficult enough as it is without having downtime messing about like this okay and just think about the wind direction all right because say for example if the wind was blowing that way well what's going to happen you're going to no matter how tight you are up to that feeder when you pick up on that feeder certainly if the wind is strong from right to left as you retrieve this feeder on this line inevitably it's not going to come in a straight line you know it, you might be getting a bit of a bend in it like that because of the wind all right so if you were to offset your lines at this side for example then that means that the feeder is getting pushed away so again it's not coming over your lines it's just thinking about what kind of feeders you need to suit that scenario now for me to finish on that would be the style of feeder that i would use wherever i could okay i love that feeder that style feeder because it sits on the bottom it's a nice wide surface area and that sits really nice on the bottom however as we know that style feeder won't always get us to where we need to want to be you know if we've got to go further out in the you know in, on the venue if the, if there's a wind then that is when we've got to change to either um one of these sorts of feeders with the with the weight at the bottom or we've got to switch to an horizon style feeder just to get out there that's the key that's the the important bit to get out to where the fish are now these are cage feeders we've only talked about four of them and the, but they're the four main styles that are out there on the market obviously there are different manufacturers making feeders but these four styles cover all my cage feeder fishing whether it be deeper water or shallow water and a final note on that about the um, ground bait side of things lots of people ask me they say what what do you do when you're faced with with deeper water but you want to fish a cage feeder aren't you concerned that the ground bait will be coming and exiting out of the feeder um, well what I would much rather do is, you see there are a lot of people out there when they fish with deeper water, they would all change their ground bait mix to suit the deep water. Now, that's great. That means that the ground bait is a little bit stickier, for example. It's going to stay in the feeder longest for when it gets to the bottom. I, I've got to admit, I don't like doing that. And the reason why I don't like doing that is because you're changing your ground bait mix. You know, more often than not, certainly in big competitions, I'm using a ground bait mix that I'm absolutely confident with. 100% confident with you know and that's why I've got it the last thing I really want to be doing is adding things to it and changing it if I think I need to be fishing a cage feeder in deep water I would much rather keep the ground bait mix that I'm confident in I wouldn't want to change that and all I would do then is change the style of the feeder so if it's deep water and I think the, the uh, ground bait is coming out of the feeder before it hits the bottom then I will just change to a solid plastic feeder or a dome feeder or something like that something that's much more encapsulated so that you know it's just protecting the ground bait from from the water as the feed is falling through the water so I know a lot of people change the mix for deep water I'd rather not I'd rather keep the mix that I'm happy with but then change my feeder accordingly well, I hope you found some of this useful. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and from this channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. So thanks for watching. Hope you've got some value from this video and I look forward to seeing you next time.